Hello my friends, today I'm going to be painting from life. I'm painting a Calathea pinstripe leaf, which is a really, really fun, kind of quirky leaf. It has some, some dark and light green, some warm and cool green tones, and it has pink stripes. So you're welcome to paint along with me, or you can just watch my process and see if there are any techniques that you want to use for your own paintings. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so to get started, I will... I'm going to do a leaf that is coming towards me. The point will be coming towards me. Try and draw a little darker. <laughs> so here's the main vein. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some little pencil lines that are going to be preserved. So I'm going to keep them white for now. And then later I'll come back and make them pink. But for now, just I'm going to try and avoid them. want them to look a little organic, not too um, consistent, like just, uh, you know, want to have two together, then skip some space, then have one, then have two. Whatever you do, it's probably going to look pretty good, <laughs> as long as it's kind of inconsistent. All right. space there and then all right so then I'm going to mix up let's see here I'm going to do just pure sap green and I'm gonna cover the entire leaf except for where I drew those pencil markings and I'll try and just do a really even wash on it and a smart idea for me would be to do the left side first that way I'm not having to like reach over and get my hand in the wet spot all right so I'm going to speed this part up just because I think you probably understand what I'm doing so I'll see you in a minute So you'll notice that I kind of just went around the leaf a few times and did a really even layer of sap green. So now that it's mostly dry, I'm going to do a mixture of perioline green, which is kind of a nice bluish green tone, which I really love this color. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go around the edges and then I'm going to go down the center but I'll start with the edges and just get right to it. So I'm using a pretty heavy mixture here because I want this to be a pretty strong green tone, dark green tone. And what I'll do is I'm going to Draw just a few lines that kind of reach down into the leaf.
do next is go along the vein of this leaf. And I'm going to try and carefully avoid the very center and keep that part a lighter green. So I'm going to go ahead and just start by uh, drawing a line, on, I think on this side, just so I know where to paint up to. And I'll do the same on this side. I think that'll be just fine. I think over here I'll just let the vein kind of disappear. So what I'm doing is just going to follow that vein using the same perylene green mixture and just go along and start going feathering out into the leaf. Keeping it nice and inconsistent so it looks uh, realistic. So some parts only go out a little bit and then some parts reach further into the leaf. Just like so. Um, a few of those spots, spots I'm going to make it just go all the way across and connect because that's what I'm seeing in my plants right in front of me. few weeks ago I was making a, this exact video and I realized only once I started editing it that the entire thing was out of focus <laughs> and that was a bummer but you know what maybe it was for the best because I think this one's actually turning out a little bit better than that leaf turned out and I guess that's because I had a practice painting under my belt, so. All right, so I'm going over to the left side and doing the same exact technique, just avoiding that center vein, keeping it nice and inconsistent, reaching up into the, into the leaf. So I do this kind of trick a lot of times, I don't know if it's a trick, but it's just a, something that I find helpful is I kind of squint at my paintings so that I'm kind of just seeing values and I'm not getting caught up on like little details. It just kind of helps me to, it's almost like if I were to be an oil painter and I can step back a few feet from my easel. But if I squint, I feel like I can kind of get that effect of looking at it from far away and I just see values so I can see like what parts are light, what parts are dark, how it's looking as a whole. And I'm looking over here at my out of, uh, out of frame plant and squinting at that as well so I can kind of see what needs to change in my painting. So I'm gonna just keep adding to these dark spots. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with how this has turned out. So I'm going to let the dark spots dry for a moment and then I'll come back and add our uh, pink tone to the stripes and then we'll be done. Okay, so the last part, pull this into frame. I'm going to do just a tiny bit of a real and yellow and a lizard and crimson. So this is going to be a pretty pale pink and definitely a warmer pink. And I'll just go ahead and drop it right in there. And even though my paint is dry around it, if you work with watercolor, you know that it's pretty easy to just 
activate that color <laughs> by touching it with water. So I'm trying to be careful and just drop it in the white as best as I can. You don't want to rub the color around it too much. So there you have it, finished product. Uh, this one is actually fairly easy to work on and it's, it's fun because it has such a unique quirky kind of look. It's a very dramatic leaf. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.